uh, what that was not required. What was required to do was just the first three months, but because he had all the information ready, so he said, ah, why not I just give you guys everything? So I said, okay, well, you are, you are welcome. And that's exactly when we, we started, you know, to, to hear from him about the expenditure items or what was spent um, on what areas, as, as, et cetera. So you're going to realize that for the first um, four months of the year, um, I think there was an expenditure of about $5 billion, um, for the first month of the year. Now, if you look at the total budget, you know, there are two things we need to clarify also that um, a lot of people really don't seem to understand. You know, when you look at the government budget, it's two aspects we have to look at. One is the government local funds. The government local funds, these are the funds that are generated internally by the government of the Gambia from taxes and from non-taxes. Non, non, non so that's what they call GLF and that's what they call um, uh, um, uh, the, the, the Gambia local funds. Then the other aspect, which is grants, um, some other budgets, could be budget support, and loans, etc. Those ones, when you put it on top all together, um, uh, that's, then you have the holistic budget. But the, the one we, 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 we really gonna care more about, which is the Gambian local funds. Um, because these are the funds that we're actually gonna use to pay for salaries, um, uh, to pay for these debt services, um, to do other operational expenses that we have uh, in the country. But then the other ones, which is about the, uh, the budget um, grants and loans, you know, those ones um, uh, together, you'll have about almost 30 something billion dollars. But for this particular item, we're gonna deal with only the government local funds, which is on the budget, what we budgeted for this 2020 is about uh, 21.2 billion. That's the budget of expenditure um, for 2020. That's the government local funds. Now, if you just want to have an idea, of example, um, uh, how much on average, you know, you know, you know the budget uh, normally doesn't run like, you can have a monthly average, for example, but it doesn't really give you a holistic view of really what's actually happening. But just to give an example, now, if we say the, the budget, the, the government local funds, the budget for 2020 um, was about 21 billion, then we can actually say that every month uh, we have about 1.75 billion. That, that's what it means on average. So that means for the first four months of the year, if you multiply 1.75 billion by four, then what you get, you get about 7 billion. But the minister is telling us that they've spent 5.08. Essentially, what that means is they've actually spent below what was budgeted for. And what was approved by parliament. That's what it means. But what happened is people really don't seem to read the figures very well. Because you hear five billion, then you say, oh yeah, they've misappropriated this, they've spent too much money. And not because see, the ministries can't spend without parliamentary approval. We approved 21.2 billion on the government local funds for them to be able to spend. And that, what that means is, on average, they are allowed to spend up to 1.7 billion on average, even though it doesn't work that way, but it gives an idea. So essentially, if we look at averages, for example, for the first month of the year, they were allowed to spend up to $7 billion on average, but they've spent about $5.08 um, $5 So essentially, they've actually spent below what was actually approved, if you go by averages. Um, uh, um, uh, are, you, are you with me? Yeah. Then, the next question is like, where, where was that money spent? The bulk of the money, where is it spent? Now, if you look at the, the way um, uh, government works, um, uh, for example, um, uh, you have about close to 26% that is spent on personal emoluments. These are the salaries that are paid to civil servants. 26% of the money, that five billion is spent on personal emoluments. These are the salaries that are paid to the civil servants of this government. Then another 24% is paid to other current. Other current, uh, that means um, the, um, uh, the, the other current actually means like the traveling, the social security contributions, and the exchange rate concession. You know, when we do our budget, we budget based on dollars. But the embassies that are outside the Gambia, you know, you, when you're gonna pay the money, you pay it in the foreign currency, like if they're in, in Europe, perhaps you pay in euros. If they're in, a, in, in South Africa, maybe in dollars. If you go to other countries in the US, dollars. So what happened is due to the exchange rate um, hike up or down, we have also a particular budget line I do call exchange rate concession. And I think if you look at it on year on year basis, you're gonna see that the government actually spent close to 200 million on this exchange rate concessions because of the rate sometimes may go higher than normal. It means the exchange rate gain or loss at any particular time. So the, if you look at the, um, the, 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 the other current, it comprises of the travels, comprises of other um, uh, um, uh, exchange rate concessions, as well as, um, uh, the social security contributions. That is another 
um, 24%. So those three, the salaries, the order current, and the, um, uh, the personal emoluments, the three of the items has taken close to 76% of the current expenditure. Uh, I what, is, what is the third one? What is the third one? The personal what? The personal emolument, that is salaries. You can just call it salaries. Personal emoluments. That's our salaries. And, and, and the first one? The twenty-six percent is 20, uh, personal emolument. That is salary, twenty-six percent of the amount. Okay. Then you have twenty-four percent of um uh, of um uh, order current. Order current means the the um uh, travels, um uh, exchange rate concession, and social security contributions. Okay. Okay. Then you have the third one, which is subvention. Subvention meaning the you know there are certain parastatals or certain government institutions that are giving money to be able to operate, like the National Human Rights Commission, like the TRRC, for example, and also the um, uh, the um, uh, the um, uh, the Constitutional Review Commission. Um, uh, these are the transitional justice programs. So those three. Together with subvention to Nike and Gambia Granite Corporation, which the name has, the name has changed, that is 24%. So the three of those areas, they have consumed 74% of the expenditure. Those three, those three budget line items. They've consumed 76% of the 5 billion we are talking about here. Uh, are you with me? Yes, we are with you 100%. Okay. Then another 12% of this expenditure we are talking about 5 billion, was spent on debt servicing. You know, you know, you know. We've we've um, uh, we, we've taken loans, both domestic and international. So, and every month or every depending on the agreement, there are certain payments that you have to make. So, twelve percent of that amount also goes to debt servicing. So, right now we are talking about now about eighty-eight percent of that five billion has been spent on those four items I've mentioned. Okay, the last one is on loans and and what else? You call it debt servicing. Debt servicing. Debt services. Yes, about yeah, about twelve percent. Okay. Yeah. So essentially, eighty-eight percent of the total expenditure we've made for the first four months of the year has been spent on those four items that I just mentioned. Okay. And 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 again, I can tell you, those four items, there is nothing like ifs and buts. These are things that you have to do. If you take a loan, you must pay. If you employ people, you must pay them salaries. If you employ people, you must be responsible for their social security contributions. And if you also employ people. Some of the allowances, like travel, like the, like the security services, you have to pay. Okay. I, I, right. I, I think that should be very clear now. Thank you very yes. much. Yeah, yes, clear. yes, clear. Exactly. You explained it very now, well. Now it's, um, it's left to the panel to decipher um, this information. You've made your case. Um, yep. I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure, like, and, yeah, and, 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 let me, and let me add also. And mm -hmm. I, um, I can say that I wish the minister also explained it the same way in yeah. parliament. Then yeah. you're going to say that the general public will actually have a better idea about what yeah. we are talking about. Yeah. Yep. Can yeah. I go in yeah, here? Come, in, come, in, come in right in. Uh, the panelists <laughs> are hungry. Come in. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, uh, Honorable Mbok, thank you very much for your explanation. Thank uh, you. It was very loud and clear. We really understood what you said. I mean, I totally understand what you were talking about. Yes. And, uh, you know, from, uh, from an end user standpoint, you know, yeah. uh, what I would like to say is, uh, first, I'd like to make some recommendations. Uh, and, and, and second, I'd like to talk about how we can monitor this budget. Because one, as you were talking, you were using certain ter terms that I would not understand as an end user. And if a minister of finance go to Parliament, Parliament will understand, but when you put this on television, the average Gambian people will not understand what you said, some of the terms that we used. We need to go down to the basics so that people can understand and call salary a salary. Just put it on the budget line as salary. Exactly. So everybody understands when you say salary. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and whatever travel you call it, I don't even remember what you call the travel, but we need to call it travel expenses. Exactly. Okay. If they what label that travel expenses, you have salary. You know, you have. What's that? Order currency. Order currency. You know. Yeah. Falls on the order currency. Order currency. Yeah. 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 This, this yeah. Is yeah. Is the Gambian Stavly. people. Yeah. Yeah. Stavly exactly. Gam yeah. Good. Uh, uh, Gambian people need to understand that this is travel expense, not order current. 
They need to understand his travel expenses. They need to understand his salary contribution or salaries, mm -hmm. uh, which falls on the label. Because uh, generally in America here, mm -hmm. I work for a company where we work with budgets every yep. day. And, mm -hmm. and, and we monitor our budgets every month, not wait till the end of the year or quarterly. We monitor everything every month. So, so but like I said, first, if we say salaries we have a line item for salaries we have line items for uh travel expenses we have mm -hmm. line item that says social security contribution mm -hmm. and we have line items that says uh maintenance if anything mm -hmm. that's gets done on government buildings in the hospitals and things like that for example we'll call it maintenance mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. um uh, we should have a line item that says rent if the government is renting uh, a place or places that we use in those buildings as offices, it needs to be called rent. This is what yep. the average Gambian will understand. We yep. call it rent. So if we itemize everything like that, at the end of the day, the budget will have, instead of a lump sum of things into one line, it will be a broken down thing. It will all be breaking down so people can understand on paper. When you look mm -hmm. at a financial statement, you will not have any question. Here is mm -hmm. travel. He uh, travel expenses, he has uh, labor costs, so this is salary and this is uh, social security contribution and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. Yeah. Now, when we have that and a budget is uh, given to, um, uh, the government budget is out and you, the National Assembly, when it gets to you, when, when the executive branch brings the budget to the National Assembly for you guys to approve, mm -hmm. then you'll be able to see the breakdown of everything, what is gonna be spent on what. And you can easily question and say, hey, and, and also when you're doing budgeting, when the gov not you, but when the government is doing budgeting, they really need to look at, uh, uh, really need to look at the past three years. What have we spent on travel expenses mm -hmm. to be able to determine this coming new year, how much are we going to spend? Mm -hmm. uh, but, but, you know, Go, going down like that, it will give them an average of what a budget should look like, uh, mm -hmm. not something that's going to be a guesswork. We can see that for the past three years, this is what we're spending. Do we need to decrease this or increase it? Those are things that will help them do that part. And also, I've always uh, recommended a computerized system in the government. The whole government should be computerized so that everything could be done on uh, electronically rather than on paper. I'm sure they've done some things on computer. Uh, they type them on computer and print them out for, for you guys to be able to look at. But really to computerize everything will really help very well uh, because it's gonna prevent anybody from manipulating anything or changing anything because it'll all be done electronically that will be fed into a, a database that the only person, the only thing they can do is pull the report and see it, not mm -hmm. make anything out of it. So. When I go down to breaking down the budget, after we break down the budget line by line, uh, now the control part becomes very critical so that we don't go over the budget. Gambia being such a very poor country and don't have a whole lot to offer, and we struggle, and the government seems to be the only body that really employs the most people. We need to try to find ways to shift from employing more people to bring in, encouraging investors to come in and, and have people go find employment with them, investors. But for the government, as we are talking about the government, let's say you have 5 billion uh, or 21, the 21 billion dollars that we budgeted, 21 point, uh, what was it, 21.2 billion that we budgeted. I'm going to make a simple math because when I talk, I want the average Gambian on, to understand what we're talking about. Let's say um, every minister, or I'll just pick one minister, the minister of, uh, I'll pick minister of health, ministry of health. If the ministry of health's budget is uh, 12 million, as an example, if they have 12 million in a year, they need to understand that the average that they can spend in a month is 1 million in 12 months, okay? The average is 1 million they can spend. And that 1 million should be broken down to salaries. Here's your social security contribution. Here's your expenses. Here's a medical supplies that they need to put in, the, in, in, in our pharmacies, in all the hospitals. Uh, and here is 
uh, building maintenance because they need to maintain the buildings. The hospital should not be, uh, you should not go to the hospital and see uh, scratch paints and scratch walls and broken windows and, and uh, a lot of cobweb on windows. People need to be, uh, bathrooms are so dirty and filthy. Somebody need to be responsible to clean all those. So that's all part of maintenance, cleaning and maintenance. So if they have a breakdown of that, uh, and of course they will also have travel expenses in there. So when the Minister of fi uh, uh, Health look at their budget, and this will apply to all the ministers, ministries, when they look at their budget in a year, they can say, all right, in the month of January, we have one million. One million has all the things that are listed in there. At the end of January, they need to be able to pull a financial statement that shows them what they actually spent in January so that they can see, okay, did we meet our budget for uh, uh, medical supplies. How about our budget for maintenance, budget for salaries? Our social security contribution is something they probably can't change. You can't do anything with it. It'll be the same amount going to uh, social security pretty much. Uh, so the other things that they can control are the things that they need to focus on. If so, if they look at January financial statement in the month of February, they need to be able to say, oh, we overspent our travel in January. How come we spent, um, 500,000 more than that, that was budgeted for, or 200,000 more than that was budgeted for. So for the Ministry of Finance, uh, I keep finance, saying finance, but for the Ministry of Health to be able to balance their budget at the end of the year, they need to be able to say, all right, uh, we overspent $200,000 in, 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 in travel expenses in the month of January. I need to make up that $200,000 in February to replace the January statement, the January financial statement, because I'm not going to, there is no extra money for me. There is no, there should not be extra money. We don't want to over uh, continue doing that in January and February and March. By the end of the year, we will be a so million dollars over money. our budget. We don't want to over. Yes. Now, so, let me, yes, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me just, um, uh, <laughs> Yeah, go, ahead. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. What happens is the way the way a country's budget works is a little bit different from um, uh, uh, an organization who has money put on the side to be able to do their operational expenses. Sure. Here in the Gambia, mm -hmm. we live hand to mouth. Yes. They collect monies during the month. Yep. And once they collect the money at the end of the month, mm -hmm. then the Minister of Finance, what they, they are supposed to do is they're going to do something they call cash allocation. Allocations. They're yes. Gonna look at the prior, they're going to look at the priorities of the government. Mm -hmm. And they take that cash that they have collected during the course of the month and then allocate based on those priorities. For example, do you know the salaries you can deal with that? Yes. Then we go for um, uh, for the for the loans we have to pay. Yep. Then anything extra, that's what they're gonna take now and they see what is given what is going to be given to each of the other ministries based on a priority. Now okay. the, 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 the the first thing you mentioned earlier about uh, a computerized system. Mm -hmm. um, I think um, uh, the government of the Gambia, together with other African countries, they are using a very sophisticated um, financial management system called the IFNIS. Okay. Um, uh, that was deployed more than 10 years ago. Um, okay. It's very sophisticated. And then um, all these things you are talking about actually is there. Oh, good. Uh, once, the, once, once the budget is approved, it's actually... Okay. Any expenditure I think that you made at any particular time, you can also go and then see exactly how much you have spent on a budget, uh, budget line and how much actually balance actually remains. Okay, now, uh, in terms of the budgeting, what they do now, beginning last year, they've changed the way they used to do things. You know, historical um, uh, um, budgeting is also important. So you don't know exactly how did I do last year or yep. the year before or two years ago. That's yep. really very important because it's going to give an idea of yep. like really how can you plan for the future. Yep. Uh, but what they um, added last year is the person they call program based budget, which means their budget is based on the programs a particular ministry wants to do. So they're going to look at those programs and then try to allocate funds. But those programs must be something that will be beneficial to the population. Yep. Impact. They, they have to be have an impact on the population. Now, before maybe they said, okay, the Minister of Health last year, you, you purchased, uh, for example, um, a vehicle. So this year we're just going to, you purchased five vehicles, for example. So this year we're just going to give you one more. No. Now, they, they, what, what, what they're doing is they're, gonna, they're doing program-based budgeting. Meaning at any particular ministry we have, they must give the programs they want to implement the following year. Yep. And each of the programs, they will have to show how is it going to benefit the average person in this country. And yep. that's how the Ministry of uh, Finance uh, collected the budgets together and to come to the national assembly. We just started doing that last year, which I think is the best thing to do because yep. we cannot just keep giving money to the ministries for them to use anyhow. It yep. must be something that will be beneficial to this country. 
Very good. So what I would add to that, so I'm glad you said that part. That's good. That's kind of like the way I'm thinking they need to operate. But what I don't understand is how we always go over the budget. So I will now focus and shift on the control mechanisms uh, by going directly to Ministry of Finance. Yeah. So for the Ministry of Finance then, since they do all this budget, and we all know they do that, yeah. I think they need to look at revenue mm -hmm. before they think about the budgets. How much is Gambia bringing? How much revenue are we collecting from all the taxes and everything, and everything that they collect? Uh, mm -hmm. The revenue, and 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 once they know what their revenue is, mm -hmm. and try to cut our coat according to our size by using that revenue, and budget based on that. If there is any time that some loan need to be added to it to be able to fulfill the budget, yes, you can say you can say, okay, Gambia generates. Uh, this much in uh, revenue. Let's say we, we generate $10 million uh, 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 or let's say $10 million, uh, uh, yeah, Dallas is, I'll give you an example, $10 million in revenue. Then we need to look at that $10 million in revenue and look at all the costs associated, all the expenses that we do. Can it fit in the 10 million? If no, this is where the loans come in. How much loan do we need to make to make our budget? Uh, once we get that in there, now we need to have that financial discipline. The Minister of Finance need to be able to say, all right, and prior to doing budget, that really every, every ministry should really get their own budget yeah. and submit that to the Ministry of Finance mm -hmm. and, and say, here is our budget for this year. And then the Ministry of Finance need to be able to see the money that we have for from our revenue and from our loan, can we fulfill this budget? If the answer is no, uh, the executive team that from the executive uh, branch, uh, including the Minister of Finance, of course, need to be able to go back to that ministry and say, we don't have that money, much money for this. So we need to look at find ways where we can cut this budget. Maybe it's travel. They can identify something and say travel expenses. Can we start to uh, stop flying people out to go do things and do it online? Can we do Zoom calls? Can, if somebody needs to go to attend a meeting, can we suggest they do Zoom call and get their meeting done there rather than flying and paying travel uh, expenses, the airline ticket, uh, 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 their meals, and their per diem that they're going to pay on all of that? is a good way to cut some of the expenses out and say this year, uh, last year we spent uh, 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 $3 million in, in travel expenses. This year, we're only gonna budget 1 million. So figure out how you're gonna make those ends meet, but you're not gonna have that many, that luxury to be traveling and getting all that per diem because mm -hmm. we don't have the money. Let's not spend what we don't have. Yeah. You know, right. uh, you know. so I'll, I'll stop here and give them a chance. You give Alice also a chance. <laughs> Right. Thank you, Sam. Um, so it, we have come in noting the, um, you know, some of the points that you guys discussed. So I'm just going to allow um, Alas to come in, then I can go over some of the important areas that you highlighted uh, in your discussion. <coughs> Alas, come in now. You mute. Uh, we can. You are on mute. You are on mute. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Bo. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I'm uh, very happy to hear that our MPs are very innovative. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know that we all try. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's why I had to laugh uh, as this CC uh, explained. Yeah. We have to take example from the last three years. You understand to compare it. I just wanted to say stop, 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 because there was nothing like this before. <laughs> you cannot compare it. So, <laughs> congratulations, our uh, new MPs, and uh, absolutely nice that yes. very young people Making progress. And try to make everything modern and uh, comparable to the international committee. Sure. Yeah. Anyway, what 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 uh, Mr. Zizi was saying is also true. This breaking down of uh, things to have uh, mere, uh, uh, more, more understanding about the whole thing, where it's going and where it's coming. It's nice, you have explained it uh, very well. I think uh, one can understand, but I only have problems with 
for example, this other currents you mentioned that is uh, that, that yeah. includes uh, traveling and uh, this yes. uh, exchange rate. Yeah, you know, I've, I've been yeah, I've been talking about it all the time. When people see that our seaport is very full, they think that there is a lot of work being done. And uh, nobody considered that this, this uh, weakening on our dynasty. Yeah. Because all what is coming at the port is looking like job and business. Yeah. But uh, all these things are being imported. And importation yeah. is for our dynasty not good. Yeah. It's weakening the dynasty. And uh, through that, we, we're wasting also a lot of money, you can say. That's why I always focus. We try to produce in our own place, eat yeah. what we plant and all these things. To yeah. import is easy and it's benefiting only one or two people. Yeah. You know, not even the public and not even the government itself, even if he's supporting that. Mm -hmm. It's on the other hand, losses. We have to try and uh, think about it. Yeah. And about the traveling, mm -hmm. I have nothing against it, but um, because there must be a particular budget about it and everything, these yeah. are all costs. Yeah. But my question is, when they said it's 12 million, for example, just for traveling, mm -hmm. uh, normally you, you people can control it again because um, I could say because of the corona, there must be a lot of money now there. Yeah. I know that it, well, there was a budget for it, but when people are not traveling, there must be some, some um, an amount there. Yeah. So not that we just see that the 12 million is for traveling or that is it. You understand? Yeah. So, I understand so somebody is going to yeah, profit from this difference without mm -hmm. telling anybody. Yeah. Because that is amount, I know, is a lot of money. Even that one, we could have bought a lot of rice for the poor people yeah. instead of being taking loan. Mm -hmm. You understand what I mean? We, yeah, we, I, no, we should, I, have, we I, should I, have used that amount, compensated yeah. and buy a bag of rice. So that people can also stay at home, yeah. you know, there will be no tension because they have something to eat. But just to say stay home, they don't have something to eat, they'll try to go out. Yeah. And there is a law that they should not go out. So there is tension mm -hmm. just because this amount is not being considered. Yeah. You know, there are, these are the things what Sam was trying to say. Yeah. There are a lot of things we can try to optimize so that, you know, because we all know that it's a poor country. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why I used to say we have to leave and accept the way we are and what we have and things like that and try to wash away this mentality, sure. uh, 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 primitive mentalities there, you know, you have to get something, if not you are down, things like that. In Gambia, you see, if I tell you, Mr. Mo, you are a poor man today, you will, you will never talk with me again. Exactly. <laughs> it's an insult. I you know, understand I, what I mean? It's an insult. Yeah, know, yes, because I of know. our mentality, yeah. Thank even you. if you are sick, that's why I was saying, even this COVID-19, they're saying only one person or two. I told people, look, I know how we think. Mm -hmm. So be careful with these statistics. Exactly. You know what I mean? So yes, I, I know. These, are, these are things exactly. you should not tell that to a government. So that mm -hmm. means we are adopting a life whereby we always have to fight and tell the public that we are this and that. Uh, without accepting that we are poor. So that's yeah. why we have a lot of corruption, not only in Gambia, but in the whole of Africa. Just that yeah. because we don't want to accept our situation, we don't want to accept and so of what we have, we don't, we are, we don't want to be realis um, realistic. That is a big problem. So yeah. that is a thing where I say that is, uh, 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 I don't know, maybe 50 million, I just say, round about, yeah. because people are no more traveling. Yeah. And it's a lot of money. This this one we should not forget it just to say, okay, the budget was twelve million and then yeah, that's it. No. People didn't travel. So let them go over again. Yeah. yeah. Take all the, where is this money from each ministry who planned this amount for traveling and people are not traveling to see whether they use it right now for another gap or they push it for the next budget for next year. Yeah, I, I, I think, uh, yes, I, I think you are, you are quite right, um, Sam, because um, when, the, when the Minister of Finance was um, uh, putting in together the 500 million, um, uh, that was um, uh, pledged by the government of the Gambia in the fight against COVID-19. I think the first place they went to is the travel, uh, of, of the travel budget of all the government institutions. Even the National yeah. Assembly, their travel budget was cut by 4, four million. 
and the office of the president about 20 million and the other ministry is 900,000 here, 2 million here, 3 million. I think there's a big chunk of that money that was taken from the travel thing that you are, you are I can I can I can imagine. I don't know exactly, but I know that there must be a lot of money just because of that. And there are other 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 things also just like this where the government can see, okay, we plan for this and it, the situation has changed because this corona situation is a surprise for everybody and try to take that amount for all the other uses and taking loan, less loan, because the more loan we take, we pay more interest and that's also losses. So yeah. these are these losses we always have to try to avoid because it's, it's, it's nice today and by yeah. tomorrow. Mm-hmm. You know, and this yeah. when they give you money, don't say uh, thank you. Why? Because they, they are going to hold it from you. So yeah. there's no thank you for it. They are going to hold even double. You know? They make the, sin, the interest very high for the poor countries. For mm-hmm. themselves, they may used to put like 5% for the credit. Mm-hmm. So yeah. uh, when, it's, when, when African presidents think that it's very easy and so without knowing the dangers they are creating, I cannot help. Yeah, that's why many African countries are having this problem. Yeah, um, and, and, and I think, yeah. and I think with, with us this uh, um, about this loans and stuff, I think um, uh, it's very clear um, with the Minister of Finance that um, uh, loans or taking loans must be the last election for us as the government. And also, even if we have to take take them, even if we have to, um, it must be constitutional, meaning the interest rate we are talking about two percent, three percent, not anything around seven or eight or nine percent as we have seen before. Because yeah, those are extremely good. Right. And yeah, you are quite right. right. You go to bigger countries, the interest rates, you're talking about 3%, 4%. Then when they give loans to the African continent, you're talking about yeah. 7 8 or more. So for Gambia right now, I think that's a no-go area. Even if we have to take it, it must be something consistent from 2% to 3%. And yeah, I think uh, we have been really, very consistent for the past 12 months, um, uh, where if we have to take. And secondly, also, um, sometimes it's a combination. If, we, if we're going to take a loan, um, just we, what we want to do is like, 70 to 80 percent of that particular loan is a grant, meaning we don't have to pay back. So we are paying back only about almost 20 to 30 percent of the amount we are taking. And not that 20 to 30 percent also, it must be consistent that we means we are going to pay a very small amount on the interest. And I think um, that consistency has been there for the past 12 months. That's very good. And my next point is, um, uh, as Sam was also explaining, something like that, I yeah. think it's possible for ministry, they must be having accountants or I don't know. They can they, they, always, they. always come out with a forecast, forecast plan. Wow. You, are, you understand what I mean? A forecast plan. Yes, actually, um, uh, let me tell you, because I forgot to mention this in the, um, in, in the budget preparation process. You know, yeah. when they're doing the budget preparation process, um, I know uh, Elas has talked about the, um, the revenue expectation. Um, yeah. The first thing the Minister of Finance is going to do in the budget preparation is to make a forecast of how much revenue they, they, they're expecting in the coming year. So and what's how, that? How, how much is going out? Yeah. So that so, you can compare and contrast. Exactly. Now, no, no. The first they do is like they they, they calculate how much is gonna come in. That's the appro- they, they do that. How much is gonna come in? And based on what's coming in, then they 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 talk to the various ministries, and they give them a ceiling. They say, okay, um, twenty twenty one, um, for the minister of um, health, for example, um, we are gonna give you a ceiling of one point eight or one point nine billion. So your programs must be done within this amount of money. Then, uh, once every minister is given an amount, they call it budget ceiling, then they're gonna go and, and meet with them on a bilateral, bilateral. Bilateral meaning they're gonna sit down and discuss uh, what are the programs the ministry wants to do and what is the forecast of the revenue that we give them. And that's exactly how they, um, they, they, they come back and forth. Um, sometimes um, a parliament has to intervene because sometimes you know, you know for instance, um, mm-hmm. they, what, they, what the ministers want, finance cannot give them. So sometimes the yeah. uh, parliament actually has to, has to come in just to ensure that it's, it's, we good, it's, it's good that you are there and then yeah. try to so the that's, ambience yes. before it was not happening. Exactly. That's why so, I say a very inno- innovative uh, house yeah. we have now. So, so, so when they do the bilateral, uh, they agree. And um, based on the figures that they agree, so the Minister of Finance is going to come on and then put, put everything together. And now you have a national budget. And each of the ministries, you know exactly how much money has been allocated to you. And that's what he's going to now, do. Now, um, yeah. now, yeah. yeah. yeah so, yeah, yeah, that's that's a very good um point um that you guys have stated. So, yeah. I have to, you know, I have to weigh in here as well. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Being that, you know, like I've been listening, uh, you know, for a long time as well. Uh, so, it's a great idea that, you know, we are having all these parties. 
engage. It, bring, it brings confidence in us mm -hmm. as to have the National Assembly, you know, they have bilateral, you know, uh, discussions and coming to an agreement. That final agreement becomes what the, um, the Minister of Finance works with. Yeah. The only problem with Gambia we have, mm -hmm. and this is from my observation, mm -hmm. the problem is not about ideas. Mm -hmm. The problem is not about, you know, proposals. Mm -hmm. The problem comes to implementation yeah. and whether it goes to the right places. Mm -hmm. See, I, I, I don't know if you realize uh, the statement that was made by the Minister of Finance. Mm -hmm. When it came to the parliament, you were there, uh, Honorable, and then when he spoke about having to see names appear double in different categories of task, yes. that was I. Uh, that was a, that was really uh, you know a heartbroken moment for the whole nation. Yeah. You know the fact that we fought for this 2016, mm -hmm. and we come to New Gambia. That we said we're gonna do business differently. We were not gonna do the things the same way that we used to do it. We mm -hmm. have confidence in Burroughs government because he's part. He was part of us. I don't know about now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that is left to be. <laughs> yeah. But he was part of us. He was uh, a homeboy like, like you, Mister Mo. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now we hang Mr. out Stavane, with Mr. Stavane, no So um, the fact of the matter is he understands the situation. So when we come to, you know, New, uh, to, uh, New Gambia, what we was thinking is that we will not do business as usual, right? We will make sure that, you know, these things don't happen again. Make people mm -hmm. accountable, like Sam always put it. Let them pay. Yeah. Okay. If you see those kind of bogus things, those people responsible for it should be bring, you know, to light should be mm -hmm. talked about and should be set an example. Mm -hmm. I know we don't have an anti-corruption I mean, anti board right now. And then as part of that e problem, it has to be in the executive because when the president of Mr. Leone came to the country, he mentioned it and he told him that we're not gonna get, the president told him we are not there yet. What are we not there for? We are in New Gambia, we are there. We need anti-corruption board to prosecute corruption. That's the mm -hmm. only way. Well, That's the well, only way some of those well, name, well, name appearance I mean, yes, you, give me a budget, you, you give me a budget to conduct COVID-19. And I am having, Mr. Mbo, your area, I'm having double name of Alice, mm -hmm. triple yeah. name. How can those, how can Alice do all those jobs at the same time? That's not possible. That's, that's an allocation of false, uh, false, you know, people that don't exist. Mm -hmm. false exactly. tasks. And, 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 and again, right, right there, um, I just, before I just, um, I want to mention something about the anti-corruption. The executive has done what they are supposed to do. We just to come up with a bill to parliament about the anti-corruption and that bill has been referred to my committee which is the public finance committee they have done what they're supposed to do now is with the hands of the parliament so any delay is the parliament not the executive because that oh was done wow well, that, that's that's a good news to hear i mean I, yeah, that's why it's important to have it the suits. parliament got the bill <laughs> the parliament got the bill um if i am right around february or oh I excellent or so so we got the bill so is in our hands. So any delay, we take responsibility. Now, coming to the, 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 the change you were talking about, there's one fundamental thing people really forget to understand about change. Change must start from the person himself. If we really want to see change together as a nation, each and every one of us must also change. No matter uh, what change. The mentality. Exactly, the mentality. The mentality must actually change. Even if President Brown changes mentality, and the people below him doesn't change mentality, we're not going to get anywhere. This change must be a combination of all of us at all aspects of, of, of the government. Mm -hmm. Now, you see, the Minister of Finance, sitting in his office, he has subordinates, he has directors, he has deputy directors, you know, and he has other people that are assigned work to do. And the expectation is they are supposed to do the job based on the, the, the best judgment that they actually have. But if they want to do it the way they used to do it before, um, you know, um, putting names, three names, four names. I mean, I mean, there's no way, but I would, would know that, for example. There's no way the permanent secretary may know. But because of the, because of the, 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 the indulgence of the Minister of Finance and past leaders, um, a permanent secretary, they thought the amount that was given to them was too much. So, you know, you know the amount actually caught their eye. 
and that's the reason why they went back to check what actually happened. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Because, I because, if, because if we are talking about 500 million, uh, that what the government put aside to fight COVID-19, and then a comic comes up with 200 or 300 million for allowances, I mean, I'm sure if it were you, you're going to think twice. <laughs> no, like, yes, and, and that's exactly what happened. And that's exactly what happened. So when, when they went back to check, wh where is all these millions coming from? That's exactly when they realized that this actually has happened. But I think personally, I don't think it should actually stop there. I think they need to take it further just to ensure that those guys or whoever they are, um, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're brought to justice. Now, they, they, they cannot just let it, let it go like that. Yeah. Now, one second before Alice come. Uh, your committee that you are working with about this anti-corruption, would you assure us that yeah, the corruption will be punishable, recommended punishable. <laughs> well, well, um, I, I, I wish maybe we take a special day for me to explain to you what, what we have in that particular bill, what the government really wants to do. Even though some people are saying it's too harsh, but for me, I think we need even more. Okay. Because the thing is, you are, you are fighting with the number one enemy of Africa. Yeah. If you are fighting with the number one enemy, my friend, you should put all options on the table to fight yeah. that enemy and win that enemy. You should have, uh, you, you, you should be well armed. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, so, so for me, for me, um, maybe we need to add more to it, but we just should not take anything away from what the executive brought to us in terms of. Okay, we'll, we'll have that discussion. Have, yeah, we'll we'll have, have that discussion later. But uh, let Alas come in, and then I mean, let's have Sam come in and Alas come in quickly. Sure. Um, but we will have okay. a special discussion on that, and I'm pretty sure the panel will want to. So what I wanted to say on that is uh, uh, first, uh, Honorable Mbo, um, thank you for all the insight because. You know, I think uh, the National Assembly, you guys are more important than the ministers. Yeah. Okay? You are more important than the cabinet people. So we look we up to you people to really help us because you're there to represent the people and making sure that everything goes the right way for Gambia, not for the president, but just for Gambia. So uh, when it comes to that, uh, and I can see from the budget standpoint, it looks like we put a lot of things on pen and paper uh, and, and put things in, um, in the system for the budget. Uh, what Gambia really lacks is the control, the, the, the financial discipline for people to discipline themselves. And, and what you just said here about uh, the Ministry of Finance when they did that budget and, 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 and they saw uh, duplicate names, the way they found duplicate names was because the amount was too much. Well, I mean, they should have done their homework. They should have done the due diligence and really look at everything first before they even look at the amount. They need to verify everything on there um, so that uh, everything is accurate there. Uh, because usually when you sort things, that's why a computerized system is very good. If you, even an Excel file, you sort things in alphabetical order, you're going to see three Sam Caesars there, so four Sam Caesars, and immediately you're going to catch that, really. So they need to be able to sort things different ways and look at all of that before they even go to the dollar amount, the dollar amount. That's exactly how they got it. They sorted yeah, it. Yeah, and, and that, yeah, that's, that's um, good, good. So and another thing is, uh, I just want to add to this is, when it comes to change that you were talking about too, yes, it is true. Everybody need to change, but the change need to start from the top, the leadership. If the leader does not know how to make change, it's going to be difficult to, to, to make a change. They can know how to make change, but not really walk in the talk, what you say and you do that yourself. Hold yourself accountable first from the president all the way down. It, it, it trickles down. It doesn't go up. It trickles down from the leader all the way down. And, and when we say that, it, it means just like enforcing things and holding people accountable. If, 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 for example, if the Gambia law says, if a police officer takes a bribery on the street and it, 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 it uh, that, that is an offense that is equals to two years in prison, when they catch a police officer taking a bribe, that needs to go to prison. In my view, they need to follow the law. You guys do a great job making great laws for Gambia, but it's not getting enforced correctly when the enforcement is not there and they're not holding that police officer accountable and set an example, uh, just like how the president should have come out when that uh, minister of, uh, 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 Samate, minister of uh, health, when he went to the national assembly and stood out there and, and, and reveal all the things that were wrong with that budget, with the duplicate names and all the things that were happening, the next day the president should have come out and say, time out, let's stop. Everybody, let's put everybody that was involved in this 
put them on investigative suspension. They don't come to work. We're going to investigate this, find the truth, and penalize them. Not only fire them, but put them in prison. To take them to court, let the, yeah, let, yeah. The, let, they, let that be a judgment against them, and take them to prison if that's what they deserve. Or find them if they need to be, but they need to be fired. Yeah, I agree holistically, but um, this health officials, COVID-19, I yeah. would rather not see anybody. I would get everybody to, to be at work and just ensure that we are all healthy and we are well, all fine. It, 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 I, I understand that. I understand that. But when you're enforcing laws, it doesn't mean, it, it doesn't really matter what is happening. Yeah, COVID-19 is happening and Gambia mm -hmm. was not the, world, the worst place with COVID-19. We could have still had backups. You need to, it's not like everyone is involved, everyone was involved in that. There were certain individuals that manipulated all of that. Those individuals were the ones that we need to hold accountable. It doesn't mean that the nurse working in the hospital is the one that did that. Somebody put that nurse's name three times. Who is that person? Because that person wants to collect that fund three times and give one to that nurse and keep the other two for themselves. So yeah. those are the people that they need to identify. That's why the top people, usually it doesn't go down all to everybody. You hold the top people, who's responsible? Who needs to know this? Who should have checked this and know all of this before it got to that point? That person and those people are the ones that need to be held accountable. Yes, let, let me tell you something about the, the Gambia civil service. Um, you, know, you know the minister cannot discipline those employees. You know they have a code of conduct? I, I understand there's a code of conduct everywhere, yes. Yeah, what, what he can do actually refer matters to the PMO. And they have a code of conduct and they have a disciplinary process. The minister cannot actually even suspend anybody. You know what I mean? Okay. As opposed okay. to what's happening before. So, so there's, a, there's a, how would I call it again? Um, uh, there's a, there's a, um, uh, how that, 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 kind of, that kind of makes sense. I think that, that is the reason why the minister was really crying, exactly. for, cry, crying for help because exactly. he, he couldn't do anything directly um, at that point. Well, you know, and, you know, you know, you know. Personally, I have I have high respect for Dr. Samad personally. Yeah, yeah. Because of my interaction with him, mm -hmm. I have high highest level of respect to this guy. I can tell you right right now. You know, I've dealt with him on several occasions on different aspects, but I can see he's always looking for the best thing for yep. the country. Sounds like he's, it. He's so, 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 yeah. Minister of the Year. Yeah, yep. exactly. That's right. So, exactly. So, and, and, and then, and then, um, you know, uh, you know, I don't normally. See, well, but, but, but I've interacted with him on several occasions. And to be honest with you, in fact, even before he was the minister, I interacted with him on different aspects, dealing with the hospital or the health situation in this country. And uh, that actually continued. And then all the things I was looking up for him, really, he's really, 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 really doing. And I think um, perhaps we, we, we want to take a look at the overall code of conduct of, of the civil service. Maybe. Maybe well, that's something what? we need to do. We need to but, but, but then, but before Allah's coming, who, who are the, who, who is going to be the enforcer? Because you cannot just have a white paper of certain things that need to be followed and nobody's overseen. See, the problem in, in Gambia is not that we don't have talent. We have talent. The no. problem is we don't, when we make proposals, when we put out stuff, nobody enforces it. That's why we fail. The enfor have we don't have an enforcer in chief. We I have, have a solution for that. We have, no. we have, a figurehead in chief, but not an enforcer. We need an enforcer. We need somebody who can hold everybody down the chain accountable. That's all we're asking for. Because if that is happening and examples are set, nobody would, I mean, you have nice proposal. You have but, transparency. But the board is coming. The board is coming. I hope not too late. Maybe the board can have these uh, advantages to do that. That, uh, if not, can the MPs try to make sure that the board is free to do anything? To no, I can hear anything. you. I I'll ask you, you. I'll ask, we cannot hear you. I say, okay. I say, uh, that's why they have to uh, make sure that the anti-corruption board comes in. Mm -hmm. And then the, they try to give them these advantages that they can control everybody, even the president. Mm -hmm. No exception. Mm -hmm. And I think this uh, yeah, can be done from the MPs. And, and yeah. once again, I just wanted to add something, not much. This uh, anti-corruption board we've been fighting since day one, but we there. So it's very disappointing. We are going to the fourth year almost. You know, it's very good that the MPs are having it in their hand now. I know everything. I know that it's there. And I, you know, because we're following, following it, but it's too late. 
Mm. You know, and where who made this bill here? Because it should have been the first bill, the most important thing for the Gambia. Everybody knows that. All what we are wasting, mm. you know, being being hungry on all these cows, it's just because that wasn't there right away. Yeah. It should have but, saved but, us a but, lot of money that we don't even yeah. need to take loans. The, um, no, you see, but you must also remember, laws are not made for like, uh, made for like three years or four years. Uh, laws are made for them to, to last for a long period of time. So, uh, Gambia, I, I mean, the, uh, no, let, the let losses, me the losses yeah. I mean, not loss, the losses from the losses. money here. From money, we, the uh, losses, the capital losses. Lo losses, losses, the money. losses, not loss. Okay, it's, let me, let me. coming across is not very let, good. Let me, let me, let me losses, tell you losses, losses, losses. Okay. Money let losses. Me <laughs> let, me, let me tell you something. You know, you know, whenever there are auditor accounts, the auditor general comes out with things. And in fact, to, to tell you, the auditor general actually has been mandated to charge anybody who has made loss for the government of the government. He has the mandate. And he's doing that right now as we speak. But these are things that doesn't come like in the, in the, in the, in the news. You see, us at the, at the, at the, at the, at the public finance um, committee, we have a list of people that have not retired the impress that was given to them for the past five, six years. And we are asking them to pay. I've not seen any newspaper. I've not seen any TV station cover that. Yeah, yeah, and they they have have to pay. Pay. You know what I mean? So we are making people actually pay for the losses they actually have incurred for the government of the government. Okay. Now, Mr. Mbo, I have a question. Yes. Why do we need um, that many advisors, especially those to the president? Like Dusan or like uh, Siaka, my former uh, schoolmate, people yeah. who Siaka, are who don't Siaka have the background, the and, the, um, and, 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 and 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 then these people I know, they don't have even the background and the, the intelligence to mm -hmm. be, uh, you know, a, you know, a, you know, a fruitful advisor to the president. Why do we have so many advisors? Don't we have the ministries in place that can advise the president about these specific areas of concern? Why, why no, do but, we have to but, float our budget? Why do we what, need a bigger government? What, We're supposed what, what to have they, a smaller government to save money. What, what are they called? Are they not called political advisors? No, they say advisors. They don't say it's political advisors. The political parties are not paying them. It's coming from no. our, 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 government, our government coffer. Why yeah, would that happen? They are civil servants. But remember, these are political advisors. They advise the president based on the politics and stuff like that. Okay? How, and how you make that Oh, 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 well, your own country, uh, Trump. How many, how many does he have? No, actually, it's not like that. <laughs> you, no, 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 no. We, we, see, know, we are looking at holistically. Because yeah. what is happening here is actually happening all over the world. If you look at Trump, he's advised by big businesses. The gun control people, they are the ones that advise him. In no. the Gambia here, as you are mentioning, he is here, being your senior, be careful. I, I, I'll tell him. <laughs> you know, yeah, he's my senior. I, I want to actually talk with him. I want to invite him to the show. Can you can you connect? Can you connect can him with him? No, I can. I, I can. I can make the argument. Yeah, he's, that, make that argument. Argument. he's my senior in Amity. I know. That's why I want to get him here so we can go at it. No, I will. I, I, I'll, I'll get him tonight. And but remember, mm -hmm. the, the when the president needs advice for the economy, he doesn't go go to see Akajara or Dudisano. He goes to the minister of finance and his team. If he needs advice on agriculture, he goes to the Minister of Agriculture together with the Permanent Secretary and his directorate. You know what I mean? So if he knows, needs anything about environment, he also has people that are specialized in that area. He goes to them. But when you talk about political, because these are political figures, the president is a political appointee. So he also has advice. He also needs to have advice on his politics to see exactly what he's going to do on his political level. So, so are these people are are paid from the government coffer? Yes, two, two of them or three of them, I cannot remember the, their budget, but two of them or three of them, they are paid for advice. Of and that's yes. constitutional, it's constitutional, right? Of course, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Least, All right, my second question is, um, what happened to the, before Sam come in, what happened yes. to the tax um, on, 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 on collected taxes? We have a lot of taxes floating around the country. And when these taxes are collected, how come they are not being um, used? to the betterment of the country. Why, why is it that we are so much deficiency in electricity, so much deficiency in water, so much deficiency in basic uh, community of life in the Gambia, a small country that can be built within three years if we all put our heads together. Why is it that yes. we don't enforce taxes and that this tax money collected and spent in the right way? 
Why? But maybe, maybe we need to ask that question since what happened since 1965. Mm. Maybe we should go back and ask since 1965 what actually happened to the taxes that we are collecting, not only for the past three years. Mm. I mean, let's go back to 1965. No, no. And I mean, mean we, we can talk about 1965, but right now we are talking about you guys. I mean, the, the, the new face of, you know, our leadership we have. We need yes, to, you know, we need to transcend the past. I mean, the past is the past. Now yeah, exactly. we have young folks like yourself and Alice and other people around the globe. But to answer that question, if you want us to, to dwell only on the past three years, I can answer the question really very well. But if you look at the electric situation in the Gambia, right now, currently as we speak, it's better than what we had um, two years ago. Oh, in really? Terms of, yeah, in terms of availability. Well, uh, we are not seeing that. I mean, maybe you, have, no, you no, know no, better no, than no, us. No, let, let me tell you something. You see, Electricity is a capital expenditure. It's not something that you can fix in one year or two years. Because you need billions, not millions, and you need billions to be able to do those things. You cannot build a, well, a, a power station has been built in Bricama since last year, and still now it's not ready. You know what I mean? So to build an well, average power station, for example, to build an average mm -hmm. power station to supply electricity for a section of the, of the country, it will take you two to three years to be able to finish that. Yeah, but um, you know, I... I got this problem, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, there was a time I even had to contact Nawek the, uh, themselves, whether they know that there is another energy supply available in this world. Yes. And we are having everything there. Yes. It doesn't cost them anything. And actually, we are, I we are about... that they are ignoring these no. things. So I no, have to they, even they, contact them and say what's happening. Because even where I'm sitting here, these people, if you go to the sea now, you see the windmill all over. Maybe you are here, you can see it in the north sea. Why? Because there is wind. We are having yeah, it yeah. direct there in the Gambia. So, too, we have in water. Fact, we have started seeing windmills in the country. We have yeah, started because, seeing windmills. Yeah. Because we are a very poor country and then having the most expensive, uh, uh, using the most expensive energy in the world. Even okay. the people who are having money never use generators anymore. You cannot finance a generator. And then looking at Gambia, it's a very funny thing. We have nothing to eat. And, I, I our, 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 and our power supply is coming from these generators. So there must be something wrong. I even had to contact Nawek personally and ask them whether they know about uh, green energy. Let me tell you something. Um, uh, right now, as we speak, the project is actually ongoing in Jambanjeli. Um, that's solar energy. Um, mm -hmm. uh, they'll be supplying... Um, uh, they, 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 they're building already um, and they, they're going to have a renewable energy mix. That's exactly one of their plans is in the in mid term plans they, they have and they've already started the process in, in Germany. Um, they're going to have a big solar plant there and they'll be able to supply energy and that will be put back on the grid to be used by the, by, 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 by the Gambia. The project actually has already started. Now, in the next few weeks, uh, months or next few weeks, also, there's another solar project that's about to kick start and that's gonna end, that's gonna power the entire schools and hospitals in this country, including the private schools in this country, all Very using solar. Very good. You know, Can the I most jump the in more, here. More, I'm about to powerful, leave. The most powerful thing is the windmill, and we are having wind without yeah, end. Okay, yeah. Um, all right. Go, you can yeah. go ahead. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah Sam. Uh, unfortunately, I have to get on another call at one o'clock, and it's two minutes to one o'clock. So. But I wanted to go back to our topic here. You guys are on a very important part here that I'd like to talk about. But I want to go back to finding solutions for our problems in Gambia. And I spoke about this in audios even last year and sometime this year as well. Uh, what we were talking about, what uh, Honorable Bombo was talking about, the minister does not have the, the power to discipline an employee. The solution for that is, I said this like since last year, is under the PMO, we need to create human resource department that works under the PMO and the PMO need to have a, a director or senior director of human resources that also has a director of human resources in every department. If yeah. you have a director of human resources in every department, that director of human resources is the one is just like a police officer on the street. Everyone mm -hmm. in every place, even in America here, you go to anywhere, human resources in charge. Mm -hmm. They are responsible for disciplining people. So if, an employee, a civil servant, it did something wrong in a department, uh, we don't have to wait for the minister. As soon as the human resource director knows that, that takes action right there. 
action is taken. That human resource director is the one that goes by the law that you guys created in the National Assembly and say, this is what needs to happen. They don't even need to reach the, 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 the PMO. Human resource director is there that works under the PMO and say, this person needs to go on investiga investigative suspension based on the violations they have. Then we can investigate and see what happened and then decide whether to bring them back to work or not, or whether we need to fire them or anything, but that needs to happen immediately. That, this is part of our problem. It's a loophole that will fix this. Uh, if we create that, that hierarchy, we'll, cre we'll fix that problem for us. The other part is loss prevention. We really don't want to wait until there's a problem, then the Auditor General look into that problem. We need to have a loss prevention department that works with the Auditor General from their department under the Minister of Finance maybe, uh, that actually prevents loss, loss of money, loss of lives, loss of our, our, our equipment, loss of our, our, our everything, our economy. The, the loss prevention is the, is the body that really uh, oversees how to mitigate and stop, say, the customs, Ports Authority from losing money. How are they losing money? Who is stealing money? The loss prevention monitors those by having cameras all over the place and monitor the activity and see what's happening and go there and, and take action today, not tomorrow, today. They take action and get rid of somebody and stop the loss. Uh, yeah, first, you were talking about PMO. Actually, they have a direct rate for human resources. They have, they have a direct rate for human resources. I also are responsible to discipline um, uh, civil servants, actually. They've sus I've seen some suspended, been suspended without pay. I've seen actually some being fired also from the government of the Gambia um, uh, through, um, uh, through PMO. Now, mm -hmm. in terms of the, the loss prevention you're talking about, the way, the way it's done is with internal audit. The internal audit is actually under the Ministry of Finance. What happened is, when any transaction is about to take place, it must be cleared by the internal audit directorate. And these people are in all the ministries. They look at the budget, uh, um, that is for you, and they look at the cost, and they even look at the vouchers or the invoices that I've, I've given to you. They look at those things and give, give the go-ahead. And if the internal directorate don't, doesn't give the go-ahead, that expenditure item will not go. They will not spend it. So there's another layer that is, is there already under the Ministry of Finance that actually checks um, some of these transactions before you actually get to the, to the account in general for, for, for payments to be made, for the payment to be effective. They are there, and those are called the internal audit directory. They are there. Okay. And they Thank check all the transactions before it's happened. The national audit actually checks after. So we have a pre-audit that is done by the internal audit, and then we have the post-audit that is done by the national audit office. Okay, well, thank you for explaining that. I think yeah. uh, there is uh, really uh, a lot of room of uh, room for improvement in that area because every day we're losing a lot of money at the Port Authority. And I, I guarantee you, even I myself, if I walk into that Port Authority and see how they operate, I'm going to close a lot of loopholes there that will bring more money to Gambia. <laughs> we definitely saw sure about that. There's definitely saw about that, Sam. What's that? We I said, we definitely are sure about that. Oh, we yeah. need to get to there. We need to get to there. <laughs> if I walk in there and see how they operate, I'm going to say, okay, I know how you guys operate. We need to stop this. We need to stop this. We need to do this. We need to install cameras. But then, um, uh, but the only but, thing but, I'm, but Sam, I'm, I'm, I have um, a question. I have a question for Sam. Yes. Um, you know, I'm happy that you have the idea uh, using a computer uh, and very modern. So uh, what's your suggestion? When somebody comes with a false bill, you know, these are things the computer cannot see. No. Yeah, that's why you have the people. So what are we going to do? That's why we have the people that are on the loss prevention. If somebody comes with a false bill, uh, uh, number one, when that bill comes in, it needs to be looked at. The, the, the all, you need to have certain mechanisms in place to avoid the full, uh, first, sorry, first to avoid the, the false bill in the first place. We need to have those mechanisms and there are ideas mm -hmm. to do that. Uh, uh, but, you know, we, we are out of time now. I, I, I wish I can go into all of that. There's a lot in my head that I can say, but I really don't have too much time. So uh, we, um, no, I, I, what we're going to do is, I think what we're going to do is, uh, since uh, Honorable uh, is, you know, like uh, says that he has some stuff to talk about, uh, I believe, what, what, did, what did he say that um, you want to probably go into in detail with um, some of the, the area that you, you, you mentioned, uh, Mr. Mbo? No, no, no. The, the only thing I wanted to, to, to talk about uh, briefly was about the, the, the way um, uh, this um, uh, um, uh, financial management system actually works, actually. 
you know, yeah, you know, so we, 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 will, we will, we will, but we will. I'll, I'll, I'll have to get off and then I'll, I'll, I'll we'll, we'll catch up with you guys later because it's already four minutes past one. And yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. So go, go ahead, so. Sam. We'll, we'll arrange something. Yeah, thank definitely. you, also. Thank you very much. Right, right. Yes, thank you, yep. thank you. Yeah. So what I was saying, um, Mr. Mbo, is that, you know, like what.